<laughs> These two friggin' kids have been skirting fame for a long friggin' time. Now they're finally getting a bone. Hey! Polly Nipple. Oh! Robbie Nipple. What's your sign? When's your birthday? What's your life about? I hope you know a good cerebral surgeon because I want to fuck your brain now. If I pick up life, I pick up life. They never work. I always end up getting slapped and being all the jerk. After all the hell we've been through. Frankly, sometimes they scare me. The hairy areola. When we were first starting out in this business, we spent a lot of our time as a uh, Hall & Oates cover band, a Latin Hall & Oates cover band. Right. We did songs like uh, Umbre Eater. Right. Uno on Uno. She's a Rich Girl was pretty good because we had that, you know, you can rely on your uh, on old Umbre's De Niro. Right. Uno rely on your old man De Niro. Uno rely on old Umbre's De Niro. The problem was, that was all the Spanish we knew. Yeah. Our music has the meaning of a thousand souls trying to escape from the bowels of a bulldog with a really bad intestinal infection. Most of our songs are really right from here. What we tried to do was call our first album F***. The censors didn't really go for that, though, so we tried to call it shit, but uh, they didn't really like that, and there was no way they were going to let us call it C***. So what we did was we decided to call it C***. And uh, after C***, we came out with another, uh, our second album, which was Caution, Blind Person in Area. Uh, we, we started in Lebanon, Kentucky. There was a man there named Stumpy Pete. And Stumpy Pete really believed in us. He believed in us with all of his heart and all seven of his fingers. Polly and I had a falling out of sorts with Stumpy Pete. We had come back to the apartment that we were living in and we could not find any petroleum jelly anywhere. With our Native American backgrounds, uh, it was only a natural progression. Uh, that we took show tunes and war cries and blended them together into essentially what became the Harry Ariolas. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Ow, that hurt me. Ow, ow, that hurt me. We really began to focus on our career after we watched the movie Philadelphia and realized uh, that Peter Scolari is gay. Hot sun on the beach and there's no stopping that guy in his speedo. We split everything 50-50. I mean, our writing relationship is unique in that fact. Right. I usually write all the, uh, the music and lyrics to the song. And I, I usually am the one that gets the coffee. All right, dude, what's so your think, idea? What's your big idea? I think it would be about me, like, how I follow her around and stuff, you know? That girl that you stalk? Yeah. Like, well, it would be like a fun, to work, right? Yeah, it and would be like a fun thing, though, like a woohoo, you know? Like, I follow this chick around, I like her, she's hot. Right, right. So it would be like, kind of like... What do you... There is this girl I know... All right, wait, how about we just call it Stalker? All right. Stalker. Stalk her or stalk her? We'll deal with that later. All right. We should work Jimmy Walker into the song. Don't need Jimmy Walker. This, the stalker has nothing to do with Jimmy Walker. Jimmy First Walker, of all, dynamite. What the hell? Okay. We it, don't need Jimmy Walker. It rhymes. So I'll do like a polka beat. go to her car, I would walk her, oh wait, she takes the bus, I know, I stalk her. 
I mean, yeah. to be honest, we're celebrities. celebrities. We are celebrities. Um, we've been watching a lot of those behind the music shows. And after watching them, we've had to actually change our tour schedule a little bit because we don't want to fly on airplanes anymore. We don't want to right. drive on motorcycles through the desert anymore. And we definitely don't want to get in a car with Leif Garrett after he's been drinking. Polly and I really give our mother a lot of credit because as a woman with one arm, she basically single-handedly raised us. About the age of four, I put them to work picking cantaloupes out on the back 40. Our father was known as the garden hose beeper. He would drink out of a garden hose while staring in the windows of unsuspecting people. I still love my little nipples. If you give children away for money, it's technically illegal. We were really trying to break in wherever we could. They were the stand-ins for the Osmond kids. We really found that television was a good medium for us. And one of my biggest roles uh, was as Jerry, the CP comic on The Facts of Life. Uh, I know my first role, my big break, uh, was on Different Strokes. I was the original Dudley. And uh, it was very, very rewarding working with Conrad Bain and, and Gary Coleman. It was very easy to get addicted to water. I'm addicted to water. If I don't have a glass of water, I get very thirsty. Uh. Just turn it off for a second. There was a time where Paul was really into children's aspirin. And I'm not talking like the kind you swallow. I'm going, he went for the chewable. And there were days where he had like this pasty white residue around his mouth. And it looked like he had just blown a seal. Shut up! You're going to do this and you're going to like it! started to collaborate a little bit together on, um, on a new biographical piece uh, about Richie Valens, Patsy Cline, and some of the members of the Leonard Skinner. Uh, we can give you a piece of that if you want to. Yeah, please. Uh... 